Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. My name is Monty Martin and this is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition live stream campaign. Coming right back at you with the untold tales of Drakenheim. <laughs> yeah. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin and I will be playing Mara Sturmer, the human barbarian path of the zealot. And we are joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis playing Sylvie Roshot, the human cleric uh, of the light. And Joe O'Gorman playing Nathaniel Flint, the human sorcerer, uh, divine soul sorcerer. And thank you all for joining us once again. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, these are the untold tales of Drakenheim, and we are the Dungeon Dudes. We post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. So you can check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes uh, every Thursday for our latest videos, uh, class guides, DM advice, all that cool stuff. And you can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. And we also upload all of the videos of our stream to our YouTube channel as well. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes merch, including classic t-shirts like Yes, 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 and Troll Killer, but also some new ones from Shadows of Drakenheim. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And a small apology. I'm just uh, seeing a, a note in, in chat here. Uh, it turns out our Zoom call has rearranged our quadrants in, in the stream this evening. So apologies for the disorientation of people being in the wrong uh brady bunch spots uh for the, this evening i just realized that now so <laughs> thanks for me mentioning that uh these are the things that we're learning um because if you are uh new to our stream this evening you might know that we are not normally we play together in person and we have an ongoing campaign called shadows of drakenheim which is the second season of our first series uh dungeons of drakenheim well because of the continuing global situation we are not able to play together in person uh things are getting better in our area but not quite at the point where we can come together in a close little room and play DD together so we're going to continue to play dungeons and dragons online so that we can continue to get used to playing DD online in this manner um we have been running a series of really one shots that take two sessions to finish <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the world of Drakenheim, from the perspective of the various factions from season one of our campaign, uh, with a little bit of a dip uh, back to visit the, season, the characters from season two as well. So this series uh, the fo follows the pilgrims and the followers of the Falling Fire uh, on their quest and expedition to the crater of Drakenheim. If uh, this is part two of that uh, series, if you have are just following and jumping in right now with this one, what you've missed so far, uh, the our three heroes are members of the followers of the falling fire, the uh, religious fanatics devoted to the new word of Lucretia Matthias. The group of them are taking the great sacrament, where they will travel, make their final pilgr pilgrimage to the site of the falling fire, the place where the meteor struck the city of Drakenheim as evidence of their faith and devotion to become full members of the faithful. Our heroes are leading a band of other survivors into the crater. Uh, how's it going, you guys? Oh yeah, this is exactly what we expected. Um, <laughs> What are this we down? Normal. Five now? Five? Six, five. Six, yeah. Five. So technically we're above 50%, which is a great win. Uh, Class is more than half full. <laughs> still uh, a pass. Yeah, it's still a pass. Above the bat and average. <laughs> so our followers of the Falling Fire will be delving deeply today and find out, because last time, uh, for one of the first times ever, we actually ended on a cliffhanger in the middle of combat. <laughs> 
<laughs> and yeah. so we're going to be diving right back in uh, to the midst of that. As always, uh, we are getting used to still playing online. We're using Roll20 mm-hmm. uh, and uh, trying that out. Uh, we're still rolling physical dice, though, um, and tracking all of our character sheets as, as we normally do. So we don't have all the bells and whistles going in Roll20. We're just doing it our way. Um, I didn't mention this last week, uh, but some of the maps that you'll be seeing tonight are um oh, and that we had in our first part are actually some of the official wizards of the coast maps from their roll 20 map pack uh this the the some of the maps that we'll be looking at tonight i've made myself in uh dungeon fog and dungeon draft alternatively and uh we might see some other maps that i've sourced from a wonderful artist on patreon called neutral party and a few other assets who uh, from artists on patreon uh called two minute tabletop so just a friendly disclosure to our artists uh, who have graciously provided and all of our asset sources of assets who have graciously provided us with the permission to use all their fancy tokens and cool stuff uh, as Thank well you. In, our, in our games. Uh, it's uh, it, it's really, it, you know, it, it's a shame that we don't get to play on all the fun Dwarven Forge, but uh, I do do enjoy the uh, the having the virtual tabletop and searching around for awesome maps is definitely a lot of fun so if you're wondering where all these cool maps came from please check out those creators because there's a whether you want to make maps yourself or you just want to source them uh from from some folks there are some fantastic artists out there that you can use maps for in your your games none of them uh none of them have sponsored or we're not we did we we paid them to use these maps in some cases so um please please uh check them out that i really encourage you to to use them in your own games if you are all are, are also playing online so with that, shall we dive back in? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. So I'm, take I'm pretty a sure look. we were just getting our asses kicked. <laughs> just a quick recap. As I'm trying to grab my uh, my soul delirium. Uh, so yeah, to, uh, the quick recap is Sylvie is in the in the midst of trying to get her soul stone of delirium, which she has mm-hmm. found, but is unable to pull from the rocks uh mara has just been beaten to a two hp um so she's looking pretty rough and um then we got nathaniel who's surrounded by monsters and not looking too hot either let's keep it all together but it's let's pause and reflect and just think about how we got here so you led the these pilgrims of the falling fire to the edge of the crater where each of you were tasked with finding a shard of delirium in the shape of your soul and pulling it forth from the rock and bringing it now to uh, the ch- next from here to the chapel of St. Gresha. But while uh, Nathaniel was overseeing the rest of the group uh, finding their crystal shards, uh, Sylvie and Mara ventured a little bit deeper down the path into the crater to these outcroppings here where they found their shards and Mara managed to retrieve hers, but Sylvie has not been able to pull her hers out of the ro- outcropping. In the midst of all this, there were a few screams because one of the members of the group, in fact, who I think uh, she is still surviving, Mina, down here uh she touched a shard of delirium that was not the shape of her soul and uh has had to have a battlefield amputation and her screams drew these approaching massive and horrifically mutated giants out of the haze that uh encompasses the center of the crater itself where one lumbered forward another and more continued to come and now you are staring down four of these massive creatures standing over 25 feet tall with purple and blackened skin covered in welts tumors sores and various wounds horrifically misshapen limbs that are of varying lengths many of them limping some of them one of them actually has a vestigial hand fluttering off of its main hand one of its fingers ends in a bunch of other fingers and several of them have these misshapen and bulbous eyes with one eye often two three sometimes ten times larger than the other eyes which fire beams of octarine light which when they have struck have racked the body and in fact caused several of the pilgrims to erupt into fleshy masses of mouths and eyes themselves uh gibbering for gibbering forward uh mindlessly in their own rage 
we have already rolled for initiative. Uh, so Mara, you got two hit points. Sylvie, you got like how many? Thirty-four. Oh, you're okay. Uh, and Nathaniel, you got a big old thirteen there, bud. Looking, yep, looking pretty lucky good. Lucky old thirteen. Okay. So, um, so uh, we did make up backup characters, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, complete, I have faith. Unlike. Unlike some who do not follow the true path, Nathaniel has faith that uh, Lucretia Matthias and the the great delirium that comes from the sky will guide me and protect me. Okay, well, here's our initiative order preserved from last time. I, I, I you know, because haven't haven't touched the, this awesome tree. Um, and Nathaniel, you're up first, so. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, sir? <laughs> so Nathaniel runs as fast as he can, <laughs> and his his big old um, I, I, some kind of like silky smooth animal skin boots, uh, and they're bright red. And he runs and he and he's sloshing through the 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 awful mountain range and. Let's see here. Oh. Yeah, it'll work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to twin cast polymorph <laughs> on my two <laughs> comrades, expending four sorcery points. And I want... Sylvie will become a giant ape. <gasps> and Mara, you will become a Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> <laughs> so out, out of my my walking stick, I I I point and you have to get the delirium! I'm trying! And, and like two, like basically like laser beams shoot out uh, from the from my staff and they strike both of them in the, uh, where their delirium should be. Uh, and they start to transform. Become the beast that resides in your hearts. <laughs> Let loose your final form. I become like an orangutan. <laughs> okay, let, let me just get the tokens out here because fortunately I have the whole database in roll 20, so I should be able to get the tokens for these. This is actually one of the nice things about the, the roll 20 stuff is that uh, if you have the books, you can just get the tokens for basically everything. So, yeah. Uh, so, Sylvie is going to be a giant ape. So, there's Sylvie. Oh, we'll go up <laughs> here. Um,. So there's Sylvie. Can you can you control that now, Sylvie? Yep. Okay, and then I'll get. Uh, okay, so there's a T Rex for. Okay, great, and uh, yeah, and then I guess I gotta the as you transform, uh, it pushes the the other creature over this way. We'll say, and then I'll just put. I'm just going to hide your other tokens. And maybe what we'll just do here is... You're just trying to end up and, like... <laughs> you polymorph underneath me. Because you guys are, like, back-to-back, -back, right? So, like, yeah. you're riding her tail. And actually, like, the last thing that I had done... The last thing I had done is, like, linked arms with her to try to help her pull. So, like, we're transforming together. And I imagine Mara's head transforms first, and she's screaming and trying to flail her blade at the Fomorian. And as she's doing so, her head just starts roaring and turns into a reptile head. And all of a sudden, her arms shrink back, and then she starts growing. <laughs> I'm just going to position it like that for the least disturbance of the of the overall uh, creatures. That is awesome. What a stunning play. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Nathaniel, uh, anything else that you want to do there, bud? Uh, no, I'm gonna. I I I proudly like put my hands on my. I go, mm, that'll. <laughs> all right, you two, collect your stones and get back here. Get meet up with the group. They're all fleeing. <laughs> Sorcerers, everybody! Sorcerers, Come on, buddy everybody! <laughs> I let out a roar. Uh, it is all your turn, this, yeah. uh, Mara. What are you gonna um, do? 
I'm going to move around this Fomorian, kind of wrestling with him, get my tail into position to whip the other one. <laughs> and, um, oh, they do have a, uh, does the tail have a 10 foot reach? Oh, it does. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be like, you know, right there. And uh, I'm going to bite into this first, the Fomorian right in front of me. Nice. Uh, getting a 26 to hit. <laughs> there you uh, go. Oh man, yeah, I need to get these dice. 4d12? That That's a beauty. Big money, big right. money, big money. Yeah. Uh, 27 damage with my mouth. Uh, They're not medium or smaller, so that's not a problem. No, but... No. He- I, I think you might have bitten him down to size. What happens? Because uh, so, this guy was really wounded before. So. so he's he's the one who clubbed me and knocked me down to two hit points. And as I was like grabbing on to Sylvie and like trying my best to hold on for dear life, I turn and that's when I like transform. And as I transform, I just bite the like top like from his from his pecs up. I bite <laughs> I bite it just right off. Oh. <laughs> And then I slam my tail into the one next. That is going to be uh, 28. Uh, yeah, that is a hit. Just the sweeping blow snaps into it, and you hear the crack of his rib cage. Uh, that's going to be... Twenty-one damage. Nice. Nice. Okay, um, what uh, what an upset! <laughs> what an upset! Nice turn. All right, uh, Sylvie, it is your turn. I'm still gonna try to get this delirium. Now, question: Is my exhaustion still count towards being a giant ape? Um, yes, your your exhaust uh, exhaustion would still apply. Um, but, uh, so you will have disadvantage on pulling the shard out, but because you're a huge creature, I'm actually going to say, uh, what is the strength of the giant ape? Uh, strength is a plus six. Athletics is a plus nine. You can use the athletics and because of the size, like you're trying to rip an object out of the ground. Right. And because you're you're so much larger, I'm going to give you advantage, which will cancel out the disadvantage. Nice. Like, here we go. I just started like, (laughs) ape yelling at this thing to like come out of the ground like, <laughs> and I like grab it 14 with that you are finally able to pull the stone <laughs> up out of the ground um, and, and the uh, and hold it in hand um, gleaming the shape of your soul alright and you know what I'm like who cares I start to run away <laughs> <laughs> Let out a victorious okay. roar. All right. So Remember, I get an opportunity attack. I, yeah, and I think you have two levels of exhaustion, correct? One. Oh, you just have the one. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh the the creature gets a uh I think he gets a fifteen to hit. Yeah, it hits. Yeah, a fourteen, sorry. With the great club? Uh, which is going to be um, 19 bludgeoning damage. So as he see, sees you pull the stone up, brings the shard down, lunging forward towards you. Anything else, Sylvie? It's your action. All right. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> the giants, seeing much larger prey now emerge. The massive creatures lumber forward. Um, the, this first one, enraged, reach, reaches out, uh, seeing that Sylvie is, uh, the ape like Sylvie is now carrying one of the delirium shards. He rushes forward to um, bring his massive, uh, this just this tr- chunk of masonry and rock, might have been a piece of a building once, just sm- smashing it over, uh, over your ape-like form for a 25 and a 20 to hit oh yeah um and that is going to be a total of uh 26 damage from the first hit and another 
20 damage from the second as he just pounds it down upon you twice. The Battle of the Goliaths. Yeah, uh, and the other two get right in on it as well. Um, Roar. <laughs> uh, oh, man. So the one from the, <laughs> the, the tail, I get two natural ones on both Woo. attacks. So recoiling from getting slammed in the tail, uh, I've never, I don't think, Double has one. that ever happened to me? Have I ever <laughs> rolled two ones? I, I'm the most nimble Tyrannosaurus Rex, and as he swings his club, I like duck down and it misses me, and then I, I, I do a little hop out of the way of the other attack. It goes, yeah, you jump it, over it, it yeah, swings under yeah. you. <laughs> it's like skip rope. Uh, yeah, uh, so just recoiling from having its ribs shattered by the, the, the blow, it swings it, and yeah, you duck the first swing and, and jump rope the second. None has ever witnessed a more agile Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> I but should also note at this moment that my T-Rex does have long blonde hair. <laughs> oh yeah, that's an important feature. <laughs> The second one they'll see sees you uh, moving agilely and actually gets an eleven to hit. Uh, I rolled a two on the the next die. That uh, is, it, it it doesn't it hits me, but it just bounces off, and I I let out a playful roar. And the final one though is going to be a uh, a twenty one though to hit. That one makes me sad, and now I'm a sad as you taunt sorcerer. as you taunt him. <laughs> yeah, I made a, a playful roar, and then he clubbed me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that'll be 24 points of bludgeoning damage. I accept. <laughs> would, would it would a blonde tyrannosaurus like isn't there like a significant evidence that that the dinosaurs might have had feathers? So you could have blonde yeah. feathers. Yeah, it's like a it's like Plumage? goes all the way down your back. Yeah. So do you look like an oversized chickadee? <laughs> yes. An oversized angry chickadee. <laughs> I imagine you also though have the curls, like I picture it with uh, oh with the braids, the yeah. braids, with the yeah. braids, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> somebody, needs, somebody needs to draw that. I get it. I want to draw that. with the wig, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like the little, the little hair flip. As, as, little as I as I get clubbed in the head, and I do a little. Oh, how could you? How yeah. dare you? Now, now I'm going to eat more giants. I eat giants like you for breakfast. I roar. Nobody understands what I'm saying. <laughs> Whose turn is it? Uh, it is the pilgrim's turn. Um, and with that, with half of the, the pilgrims transformed into horrific mounds of lumbering flesh, um, several of them um, now... Um, this, this one here is much closer... Uh, let's head down over here. So several of them are now much closer to the fleeing, uh, the <laughs> the fleeing pilgrims than they were before, and so they stumble forward. They only have a speed of ten. That one will just double move. That one will double move. This one will double move. But this one gets up to Domnick and lets out a flurry of bites against him. Dominic. Hey. <clears throat> uh, yeah. <laughs> no, Dominic! <laughs> Is he okay? Is he going to be okay? Is he going to recover from his He'll... wounds? Um, it... It starts engulfing his body, biting and shattering up up his legs, and the the mouths mouths come out of the mouths as it bites up him, and even screaming as the thing is pulling it, it pulling Dominic into its mass. Um, but uh, he is still alive, <laughs> remarkably. Not the mouth mouths. Uh, the pilgrims. Um, uh, Bernhardt and Patriza run to aid Dominic while Katya grabs Etta and they start running all in this direction. Mina and their others continue to, to, to flee. Um, Bernhardt uh, and Dominic start, uh, um, they pull uh, at Dominic, um, uh, Bernhardt and Patriza, they pull at Dominic and push 
him away from the mass of flesh and manage to free him. And they, they're all helping each other get away. Um, and one of them, Bernard yells out, are they coming? Are they coming? What about the others, Nathaniel? We need help. We need to get away. Yeah, we're going to regroup at the chapel if you can make it there. So the We don't chapel... know where that is. You're supposed to lead us there. <laughs> yeah, so maybe just uh maybe just get out of the get out of the way. You know what? I I think overall this has been a huge success. Uh, a lot of you have come away with your soul stones. Um we're uh be ready for the next part. Maybe just get away from the blobs. Uh the good news is is they're pretty slow, so just keep your distance. Uh, you don't want to get close are, are the, the others topic. still in there? Is it still them? What about their souls, their bodies? We can't just leave them like that. No, um, you're right. Uh, we're going to have to perform a uh, quick version of the cremation <laughs> ceremony. Uh, we're going to have to speed it up a little bit and <laughs> uh, get this thing kind of uh, overdrive. You know, we usually only have to do this in um, hasty moments, but like, you know, this is one of those op opportunities. We'll save some of the, um, you know, the ceremonial talks and and everything for later we're just gonna have to do it kind of in the field uh, if you will <laughs> no. and it, it uh it's your turn nathaniel what are you gonna do and i use the wand of fireballs to cast a cremation ceremony <laughs> aka fireball um on <laughs> on uh as many of the uh former pilgrims <laughs> okay those Let, poor let's, pilgrims let's get that out there for you then so we got. I, I, I assume I can get three. Maybe not. Maybe uh, maybe only well, that's two. That's the that's the radius there of the fireball. So I think. I yeah. I, I, I think, think you're going to be able to get three. I'll do three. I'll I'll get three. I'm happy with the three. closer ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your saving throw DC on your on your uh, spells? Fifteen. Uh, for the wand of fireballs. So I have a minus one penalty, and that's not going to do me any favors. I'm not going to make any of my saving throws on that one. Perfect. <laughs> 32 damage. So uh, as the, we're cooking. As the flames recede, what remains of the former pilgrims, the fleshy mass, is nothing but charred cinders. And I, uh, I, I, I yell out, uh, um, for the light, and the, and I'm gonna run back, um, <laughs> and and I, I get out, um, like a half ceremonial kind of satchel. And I, I'm getting ready to collect the <laughs> the remains so I can then deposit them in the urn later. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. For the light. Mara, it's your turn. All right. I look a little surrounded here. Uh, good. Um, Tyrannosaurus Mara is going to just bite into the <laughs> uh, Fomorian... Uh, this one right here. Alrighty. Uh, that's going to be a 22. And we are looking at... Big money, big money. Oh, this is big money. Yeah, those 40... 40 41. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I rolled a 12 and an 11 and a 7 and a 4. Okay. You reach out to bite into him and he holds his arm up to try to block the attack and you bite <laughs> down into the flesh of his forearm, just tearing away chunks of muscle, revealing the sinew and bone underneath. And the creature cries out uh, from the horrible bite. As as I turn, because I do plan to get out of here, I smash my table into this guy right here. Your table. Uh, they, Your tail. Uh, tail. Tail. Did I say table? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I great. smash him with a table. I pick one. No. I smash him with my tail. W-W-E. We're wrestling now. 
Uh, oh, that's a crit. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Oh. All right. That's a table. I'm just I'm just going to get out a uh, <laughs> uh, So that's gonna, it's going to be so 3d8 plus 7 damage uh is uh maximized uh, there is uh 31 31 plus 3d8 yep <laughs> 44 <laughs> yeah <laughs> um you so hear I, cracking bones, uh, and just this massive welt appears on his flesh as it bursts one of like the sacks of flesh that was hanging off of him. And then I, I know I'm going to take a lot of attacks for this, but uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex doesn't care, and Tyrannosaurus Rex scampers up. How high is this little cliff here? Um, as a as a T Rex, uh, um, that. That divide there is about forty feet at that point. Oh, yeah. So that that might be hard. Can yeah, I, you, like, you squeeze? could squeeze through. Yeah, yeah. I, you're fast. I, I'll you're say fast. it's gonna the 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 first couple squares. So one, two, three, four squares cause double movement. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'm getting about. Oh. Right there. Uh, yeah, and they're not happy about you trying to get away. So they're going to take their attacks of opportunity. The lowest is a 15 to hit. Uh, so they all hit. <laughs> all right. Oh, well, Just... I get to roll a lot of d8s then, don't I? It, it, this is for the crit, isn't it? Yeah. This is, this is, this is, this is... I figured, I figured, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's more coming. I don't know what's going on. Plus, I'm a T-Rex. I don't want to be surrounded. And as I run towards you, Nathaniel, you'll see you you see a T Rex looking at you, and like part of me that like there's I still keep my um I don't have my mental capacities, but I I know that you're my friend. So as I'm running towards you, I like try to signal like where are we supposed to go, and instead I just stare at you and start roaring Seems at like your a face. T -Rex. So yeah. in total, uh, it's going to be fifty six points of damage. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Woo. As, as the three of them just club into you as you try as you try to escape. Oh hey, that was exactly half of my hit points. Sylvie, we are over to you. I also take a cue from Mara running away, but I have a climb speed, so I'm like, I'm going up this wall. <laughs> I'm going up this cliff. Um, yeah. So I have a 40 climb speed. Okay, so your speed... Is, so, we, and he, this first guy made his attack of opportunity already as well. So you can just get right up there and uh, with with one move, I'll say, that okay. is enough to get you there. Do you want to attack? Uh, yes, I do. I want to use my rock range attack. Can I pick up a piece of delirium and, like, throw it at him? Uh, yeah, you, you can rip out a rock from the ground and just throw it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Actually, probably because you can do that, I probably shouldn't have even had you roll for p ripping out the your shard either. Maybe right? it's just a loose piece. Yeah, it's just like a it's like a big yeah. crystal chunk. What do you get to hit? Uh, sixteen plus nine. That's <laughs> a hit. Yeah, twenty five. Okay. Yeah, which yes. one of them? This one is the most wounded. Uh, the this one is uninjured. This one is a little wounded as well. Which one did you want to strike? Um, you know what? I'll do the closest one tomorrow because I'm like, don't have my friend! But it just comes out as... Hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is 7d6 plus 6. Hold on. <laughs> oh, the fistfuls of dice tonight. Yeah. Oh, good. You it. don't get this feeling on digital dice. You no. know, you don't yeah. get that. You don't hear that satisfying shake. I love rolling 4d12. It's It's fun. <laughs> 27 damage. Nice. Okay. Smack him with some delirium rocks. Okay, you threw a rock of delirium at him. Roll me a d6. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Six. Six? Yeah. Okay. The shard of delirium shatters on yeah. impact as it strikes into him. Wait, is that bad? <laughs> okay. I'm going to have you do and releasing a prismatic burst of energy and power. I'm gonna have you do two things for me. 
Roll me a D100 and a D8. The D8 is a three, and the D100 is six, no, no, 26. Okay. 26 on the D100, okay. So two things happen, okay? Um, there, uh, there is a blast of wild magic that erupts through the entire area, and you rolled a three on the D eight. Yes. Um, causing uh, because j- remember when Veo broke the shard of delirium? I had you roll on the prismatic spray table, <laughs> and this sends out a corona of lightning that strikes. The, the the giant as well. Roll me ten d six lightning damage. Oh. <laughs> I need my other dice. Where are my other dice? Just, I wasn't expecting to have to have these many d sixes. Is it bad? <laughs> so bad. Is it bad? Sometimes I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> ten d sixes, right? Yeah. So we just see this giant ape run up a hill. 32. Climb up a hill. And lightning and comes out of me. <laughs> throw a giant rock. Throw this flirt. giant. She, she picks up a, a, a char. A sh- she climbs up to the edge of the crater, picks up a piece of, del- of rock that is covered in shards of delirium, and launches it down towards the Formorian below. As the rock shatters, the pieces of delirium burst, sending out brilliant arcs of lightning that electrocute <laughs> the giant. Um, and this crackling energy resounds out, forming a link between her and it. And where the lightning bolts strike the giant, bursts of eyeballs appear on its skin. <laughs> and so it is charred and burnt, covered in shards of delirium that are growing into eyes all over it. Delirium laser eye surgery. <laughs> Be better. <laughs> 2020 vision. From every direction. Now. See everything. See yourself with these new eyes. And I oh, beat man. my chest in a show of strength. And then secretly in my head, I'm like, this is how apes do it, right? I hope so. I've never met an ape. Well, um, the these creatures are not impressed. Um, cha- um, d- with reacting to the mighty blow that it suffered at your at your hands, the giant um, now covered in eyes. All the eyes turn towards you, uh, Sylvie, and fire its cursed evil eye beams at you <laughs> and it's oh. a spring of, of rays give me a charisma saving throw and with exhaustion i have disadvantage on no that? not on saving throws oh not on no, no. okay uh and it's my giant ape charisma right yep are you a charismatic ape four <laughs> a four okay i'm gonna give it bonus damage because it grew more eyes thanks to the wild magic <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I did is it not. bad? Lightning, more eyes to do damage. <laughs> it's just straight up. Just the arcs of the arcs of prismatic magical energy erupting in this battle is is just emblematic of the types of things that happen in Drakenheim in this in this area of the city. Uh, it's going to be twenty three psychic damage. Um and. Uh, ch- 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 yep, twenty-three psychic damage. Uh, the one on the ground as well. Here. I yell to my pilgrims. This is what? What did what did you say there, Joe? Did you say? Uh, I I yell to the pilgrims. Um, <laughs> uh, this is why you don't drop your soul stone. Don't break it. <laughs> don't step on it. Uh, you really want to keep it close to your chest. <laughs> Um, Close th- to home. This one is going to charge ah! at you, Mara. 
Uh, That's the roar that I make. Uh, getting a 25 and a 27 to hit with its attack. <laughs> yeah. Dealing a total of 16 thirty-five points of bludgeoning damage as it charges past its ally and smashes you with its club. The one on the ground over here lumbers forward and fires an eye beam at you, Sylvie. One more charisma saving throw. Seventeen. Uh, that's a nice. success, uh, and you're and able to one. resist. The horrific energies uh, coming towards before you, so you will only take twelve points of psychic damage. Wow. Okay. The pilgrims. This last creature, this last unfortunate wretch down here, the rem remnants of one of your former uh, former mm. compatriots, lumbers forward hungrily the others um continue to run further and further away though bringing each other helping dominic as they all <laughs> attempt to escape nathaniel it is your turn okay um see Seeing his congregation uh, fleeing into uh, the abyss, um, and the rest of them either charred, uh, horribly mutated, or um, turned into a some kind of huge monster um, by his command, we're gonna maybe try to get some uh, try to get some ashes. So I'm going to start running around and I want to try to collect the ashes from the ones that have died. Okay. Um, can I do that as part of my like interaction? Like as I run by, I just sweep them up. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say that you can start collecting some of the ashes as, as you do. So from, from those that have, have fallen um, and you can still take another action. And I want to uh, let's let out a big old, uh, Scorching ray. Now you know what? Why? Why do we have a wand of fireballs if we're not going to be casting fireball? So I'm going to toss. Uh, I'm going to stay 15 feet away from uh, Goopy over here, who might have been one of my former followers. Okay. And I'm going to launch a fireball past Mara um, into these uh, three awaiting giants. All right. I get a 10, an 8. And an 11 on my saving throws. Because <laughs> I have no bonuses. <laughs> Woo and yeah, I think you can get them all very easily. Bram! Nice. Uh, 26. 26 damage. Woo! The flames lick out across the group of them. They continue. Oh gosh! <laughs> really? Unabated. Even the middle guy. Yeah, yeah. Took a bite, a rock, and a fireball. Still kicking. That's he is. It. Yeah. Unrelentingly so. Charred though they are, beaten and bruised, they continue to lumber forward. I've been using the word lumbering too much. I need to get my thesaurus out and find another one. Um, the uh, Mara, it is your turn. I lumber forward. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to just, I am I like, this, this guy charges me from behind while I'm trying to run and clubs me. So I immediately turn and just give him a huge bite. Uh, that's going to be 27 to hit. And we're going to look at... Uh, that was not the greatest roll. All right. I do 22 damage. You bite You bite into him, um, but it's more of a glancing blow as you tear into the flesh of his chest. 
Uh, well, this is risky, isn't it? Um, I'm going to run, continue running, mm -hmm. uh, getting those opportunity or yeah, the opportunity attack from the one Fomorian. I get an 11. Ah, I, I duck out of the way and I charge. And as I'm charging, we're going to use the tail attack, but I imagine that I just don't even see this thing and I just <laughs> step on it. Uh, getting a 27. Yep. Uh, for uh, 20 damage. You stomp on it and just the goo <laughs> splurts out in very various directions and a few teeth scatter about. And I, I'm just standing on it, and I roar at Nathaniel, um, uh, <laughs> seeking seeking guidance and advice. Okay, uh, team, uh, we need to get the souls, and we need to get the ashes. I've got most of the ashes. Um, <laughs> Can my is my T Rex <laughs> holding a little urn on its back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. We'll we'll say that it, it, it's on your back still. I think technically it melds into your form. I, I know. Yeah. I know. Well, if we can get them in the bag, we can always deposit them later. It's uh, important that we just at least get the ashes. <sighs> okay, Sylvia, it is your turn. All right, I rush over. I believe that's about forty feet, um, and I have to. I have to turn back to get their souls too, right? Yeah, you 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 do. Okay, then I. As I use my bonus action to turn back and revert my form. Can I do that? Or uh, I think do you have to do it, Joe? I think Joe has to do it. Can oh, I just okay. unconcentrate on it? Uh, yes, but that would end it for both of them. Mm, never mind then. Um, how close do I have to be to get their souls? <laughs> um, how close is the spell? You, you you're close. En you're close enough. Um, they'll uh. Yeah, you're you're you would need to be back to your original form. Okay. Yeah. All right. Instead, I turn around and I take another rock and I throw it at the closest giant. Nice. Uh, here we go. Are you going to pick up a delirium in rock again? Or yes. okay. <laughs> She's going for it again. If I have the option, always. Okay, roll the hit. Uh, sixteen plus nine. I did it again. <laughs> yeah, that's a hit. <laughs> and that is it's a lot of d sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here it comes. Yeah, yeah. You can't end polymorph on yourself because then you wouldn't be able to use polymorph to turn someone into a cat or like a frog. Mm -hmm. True, true, true. Is it um, is it the same effect that occurs? Twenty-five damage. Roll a d6. Uh, to answer your question, Kelly. Uh, I've. Okay. <laughs> the rock soars forward, impales the chest of the giant, and it collapses into the ground, but the delirium miraculously does not explode. Nuts. Ah. But that's still pretty cool. You're like, ah, oh, nuts. <laughs> I just like javelin it. Okay. Oh, did it kill him? Yeah, nice. it did. Yeah, it slew him. Nice. Yep. The Formorians. What? How far does he have to move? Okay, yeah, he can get right up to you. No. Okay. Uh, I should have moved further. He rushes forward, swing, and seeing smaller prey, he takes his weapons in a wide sweep. One uh -oh. against Mara, one against Nathaniel. Hello. He gets a 18 to hit Mara and a 14 to hit Nathaniel. Um, that is for sure. I'm going to burn a, a second level slot to cast shield. <laughs> oh, God. Please, no. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I scream in confidence. And, um... and Mara, you are going to take 18 points of bludgeoning damage. Ah. Good. Your hair is ruffled. <laughs> it is. I've ruffled my feathers, so to speak. <laughs> the, the other Fromorian 
clambers up the cliff over here, but he has to spend his uh, his action to to both climb and dash up. So that's that's all he wrote for for him himself. Uh, so he will target you. Uh, so he he climbs up the cliff. Yeah, and lowers his eyes at you, Sylvie. The pilgrims. Uh, I'm gonna just say that they they flee off the board at this at this point. Um, so I'm just gonna move them to my GM. Giants, there. giant apes. We'll meet T-Rexes. up at the rendezvous point. Make camp. <laughs> avoid delirium rain. <laughs> uh, and we come to the top with Nathaniel. Um, I I start hastily. I'm gonna run over and hastily collect the bone fragments of our last fallen comrade oh, from out of my, my foot <laughs> yeah i'm like picking it out from between your toes and uh <laughs> and then i uh i turn to uh the big thing that attacked me rude and uh i'm gonna cast um a scorching ray against the Oh, he's pretty hurt. Uh, I think I can get away with the Sacred Flame. Okay. Let's go for it. Uh, DC 16. I get a 9. Whew. Uh, for 9 damage. That was all you needed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gamble. Consumed from the inside by the light of the Sacred Fire, the creature collapses from the outrageous punishment its body has suffered i was trying to actually cremate the remains and i ax- and and i just whiffed on it and uh and, and, and killed he- the fumar <laughs> 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 all right mara it is your turn uh i'm just going to you know my my screen's doing weird things. Sorry. There we go. I'm just gonna take off. Like I'm 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 following after. <laughs> well, the... Can you pick me up? Oh, <laughs> a little help. I I toothily pick up Nathaniel by his shirt and fling him onto my back. Can I do that? Sure, sure. I uh, uh, um uh make an attack roll against him. Hey, careful. Okay. Be careful, super careful. I get an 18. Okay, you're able to gently bite down, resisting all urges to eat him, and swing him onto your back. Thank you, Mara. (laughs) I I roar at you, and for a second I think about eating you, and I, like, take a little nip, and then I remember that, like, you're a pretty cool guy, and then we take off together towards the uh, the pilgrims. (laughs) Sylvie, what about you? What are you going to do? Um, you know what? We have the ashes, so it's, it's good enough. I'm going to keep running. Huck, huck a rock. These guys. Oh, and yeah. Then, come, come, Sylvie. Come. Well, you know what? I'll dash. I'll dash. I'll do. I can yeah. do. With that, you flee, and the, the, the last giant is eventually lost in the mists as you make your escape from the crater's edge. And it wasn't even scary. (laughs) (laughs) And after about what, like uh, uh, 30 more seconds, uh, you guys start to lose your. I I trip as I'm like running because I'm all of a sudden I have like feet and long arms again. And there's a glaive and I'm like, whoa. Um, Oh, actually, it's an hour. So we could get pretty far. Take a moment to just remember now those that have fallen. Florian, Yannick, George, Ronja, Olaf, all of them very, very dead. Uh, but, but in this you, bag. Uh, it should have been Anna! Uh, and you got the <laughs> remains, but you actually didn't collect some of their souls. <laughs> um, yeah, we're probably going to probably wash that over when we talk to Lucretia Matthias. We totally got their souls. I... Didn't we? I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed I failed in my duties to help them. 
I blacked out again back there. What happened? <laughs> did we? Did everybody make it out okay? I see. Yeah, it looks like everybody's here. I. Uh, this is a time to reflect. Um, part of the journey is uh, realizing that not all of us will make it to the end uh, in body. Um, sometimes in spirit, it, the important thing is that you try to go on the journey and you try to... Oh, Mar, you have a question. Uh, just wondering... Um... What's the turnover rate for the, the falling fire? It seems um, seems high. I don't want to get into statistics, um, but right now we're doing actually way better than normal. Uh, so this is actually one of the more successful uh, pilgrimages. Uh, you'll notice that there's no one from my pilgrimage uh, still with the falling fire. Um, that's why I, they have me kind of do these. Uh, I'm kind of a veteran. I've mm -hmm. done one what i'll do is have me there there were four who fell uh in in this um we you lost uh you, you lost florian uh earlier uh but uh um olaf uh george ranja um Roll a d6 uh, for the for for that those because we have remaining now a few others so roll a d6 for each of them each of you can roll 1d6. One. One. Four. Okay, yeah, so none of their souls are lingering over their remains. Where, where, wherever they fell is where their, their spirits linger, and only pa fleeting moments remain for you to still go back and cat catch them. The important <laughs> thing is, is that we have the remains. Um, sometimes we must take a loss um, to truly understand what we gain from all of this. Uh, does everyone have your... Oh, Mara. Um, just another question. Before we left on this pilgrimage, we were informed that it was a necessity to collect all the souls and bring back all the ashes. When we say necessity, was that more of an exaggeration? What are you, what are you going on about? Okay. Look, I, I just want, like, are we in trouble with, with the falling fire? If we Mara, don't... the one time you pay attention to exactly what Lucretia <laughs> says. Mara, yeah, where is this coming from? Mara, okay, look, you're missing the point. The point is, is that we try. Um, and, and sometimes people's souls just do not complete the pilgrimage. It, it just makes the other parts of this more um, So I'm not in special. trouble. Technically, Sylvie's in trouble. Uh, if, <laughs> you if we're going to point fingers, uh, <laughs> I did. I <laughs> couldn't I was a giant ape. Into my urn. I couldn't help but be a giant ape. However, again, I, I want Sylvie, to I stress you were good at this. that we I do know. not point fingers. There too. is no blame. Um, uh, as our our ritual was interrupted, um, you we, you fought bravely, and we were able to at least capture their remains which will go on um their souls however will be if anything um lost to the great crater uh where everyone is born so if anything i think that's a win um i mean that's where i want to go when i when i die i want to be in the crater um probably not stepped on by a t-rex but definitely somewhere in the crater i would be okay with so i uh, i like to think that that's like kind of like the rebirth um it's what we're all aiming for. So it doesn't affect like the flame in my soul. Let's just all kind of get our story straight. I feel like we're <laughs> we're not listening um, to each other. Is everyone here? Is everyone listening? Can everyone hear me? Um, Etta, Etta, stop whining. Your wounds, they'll be fine. You're not George. Et, what I want to, let's all just know that I'm going to be talking to Lucretia Mathias and I'll tell her how this all shook down. Um, I just need everyone to focus on. Does everyone have their soul stone? Everyone? Yes, finally. Everyone holds up their shards. And they We're going to go to we need to focus on getting um uh to the ruins of the chapel. That's it's supposed to burn in my hand a little bit. Uh great question. Yes. Uh you're going to feel a slight tingling burning sensation. Um <laughs> it's Mara 
You look tired, Nathaniel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need healing. Yeah, I'm a little tired. Thank you, Mara. Thank you for pointing that out to everybody. Yep, I'm a little tired. Um, maybe we could take a little uh, rest. We could find some uh, find somewhere just to kind of lay low for a little bit, kind of recollect our thoughts, kind of reflect on everything that's happened, take a moment for our fallen uh, brothers and sisters. Mina is still holding what remains of her arm. <laughs> some of us got out with a lot more uh than we wanted mar mar bleeding a lot like are we gonna do anything about this i have i can do three cure wounds well or I, we could take a rest like if we get far enough away is there like a place no, we can't because to... we're in the the you can't a short a, rest you can take a short rest oh okay yeah actually this might be important because i have to kind of rally everyone i want to kind of give everyone a okay a moment to can we take a short rest? Can we get far enough away to do that? Yeah. 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 You uh, um you can find a spot in in the ruins and the outcroppings of the buildings around here. You can find a, a spot here to take safe shelter. Uh each of you can roll me um I no, I just thought I had y'all do that. You guys can uh can uh roll me a constitution saving throw. As you take your rest to see if you resist the effects of the haze, though, please. 14? Uh, 26. Uh, sorry, we're doing a constitution yep. save. Yeah, that's going to be 24. Successes all around. Uh, so uh, a few of the others in the group look like they're drawing on the power of the sacrament to continue on, on this far. Ed is not looking good. <laughs> She's starting to slow down. Um, but uh, the, the t- <laughs> but they press on. As the rest comes to a close, some of them empty their water skins and, and t- dress the rest of their wounds and tend to each of you. You can all spend your hit dice as needed to recuperate hit points. Um, and uh, we will... Um, I'll grab your tokens from up here as well so you can get them back up to date. And uh, yeah, so are you all able to recuperate and recover some hit points from all that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I used all my. <laughs> I, I, I used, used pretty much. I used all but one and I'm back up to full. Uh, I want to. Um, also give um, a rousing a speech. I I look to the the wounded and the suffering, and I say, "This is yet another test of your strength. It is not just the strength to carry the delirium. It is not just the strength to walk this path, but it is the strength to find courage when you have seen your seen what you have seen." And witness what you have witnessed, because what you have witnessed is, uh, by all means, uh, a great miracle. We have seen what the haze can do in its in its uh, evil um, when it is against us, but we also know what, what the delirium can do for us uh, it, when we follow the great word of Lucretia Matthias. And I want you all to look inside yourselves and ask yourself again: Do I have? what it takes and i hope the answer is yes from that little voice we can do this flame you can be do with this you. flame be with you and uh, i'm going to use um uh, inspiring leader and give you guys all some 13 temp hp get it dominic says it's a miracle that we survived alone thanks to the flame <laughs> you're right yeah dominic. yeah thanks to the flame <laughs> Flame in all of us helped us through this and triumph on our journey. Also, Nathaniel, you led us so well. Thank you for getting us out of there. Um, definitely got not giving the points to Edda. Thank you, Sylvie. Um, De- Edda doesn't need it. She's a lost cause. Um, <laughs> us three. Um, uh, you know what, Mina? Mina, let's see what you can do with one arm. You know what? Uh, I hope I hope it's the right hand. <laughs> I hope I hope you're uh, right-handed. 
Um, I can't believe I asked her if she needed a hand. I should apologize. <laughs> yeah, 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 you should. <laughs> Katya, uh, let's say Katya, Mina, and uh, Patriza. Okay. No, Dominic. Dominic was the one that gave me uh, that backed me up. All right. Well, um, I think that this is a perfect spot for us to take our break as we come into the last half. Uh, we'll take our break right now. And as you've all taken your short rest to recuperate, we'll take our short rests in real life and uh, come back at uh, 20 after. Yeah. Sounds great. Awesome. Okay. We'll see you all in 15 minutes. And we're back. Thank you, everyone, for uh, uh, tuning back in. I hope you enjoyed your uh, short rest as much as we did. Got all your hit points back, Joe? Uh, uh, enough of them. Well, not, not enough of them. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, have, I ate some plus one grapes. They were delicious. Donut from Tim Hortons. <laughs> I, I had water and cheese. I had cheese. Classic. Cheese. No. <laughs> I, well, and crackers. There were crackers, but the crackers are really just a vehicle for cheese. <laughs> <laughs> a method of transportation. Yeah. It's like you can't just bite a brick of cheese, so you eat it on a cracker. Ain't you? I, I think uh, one of the... Uh, I think Kirsten once said to me, cheese is the glue of the culinary world. <laughs> and fat oh. is the highway upon which flavor travels. <laughs> He's so wise. Never before have truer things spoken. <laughs> yeah, and Julie is a chef. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we have uh, finished all our short rests and we are back up uh, to speed. I uh, got some uh, announcements and some info to drop on us there, Kelly and Jill. Yeah, of course. Don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including some classics like Yes, Yes, Yes and Troll Killer, but also the new ones from Shadows of Dragonheim. You can check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Also, if you're enjoying the stream and you'd like to help support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can find out but how by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And if you join our Patreon, you also get access to our phenomenal Discord community where you get to chat with all of us about all the cool things that we do, all the cool things you'd like to see from us, or just chat with us about general nerdy topics in our Discord. So join us on there and check us out on Patreon. Super cool place. We, we talk about everything from... Uh, character building, dungeon master advice, two fun conversations about uh, if you were a lich in real life, where would you hide your phylactery and what would it be? <laughs> Which was a lot of fun. Um, someone, uh, I think on the Discord, said that they would uh, hi try to fire their phylactery into space. <laughs> Genius. Genius. I, 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 would, I just think the best place for a phylactery is in a safety deposit box. Like, just completely nondescript. Just leave it in your safety deposit box. Just bury it there. You know, no one's going to look for it in a bank. Nobody's going to look for it on the moon. That's true. That's true. It's really but hard to get to a moon. Except for, like, adventurers and secret agents. Because, like, the plot has to bring them to the moon. So... <laughs> it'd be like a lamp shaped like a dog in my brother's cousin's wife's house <laughs> and it'd like just be it'd... it'd just sit on the on like a weird table yeah in just the some piece of junk in an antique yeah. shop <laughs> yeah. yeah yep probably uh, my sock drawer <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay with that we are going to dive right back in um our band of pilgrims has survived the horrors of the crater's edge of Drakenheim, fleeing from the the giants, the horrific creatures of the crater with much fewer in number the ten survivors, yeah I think, I think there's ten left of you now five, yeah. we lost five including so, us, yeah Yep. we few, we happy few um what is your next what is the next destination as you finish your short rest so um as you know the first step in the pilgrimage is to collect the shard of delirium that matches your soul and now it is our job to carry that delirium as 
uh, in in its in its wholeness to the ruins of the chapel of uh, I believe it is pronounced Saint Grisha, Gish, Grisha. Yeah. And we will place it in uh, the brazier. All right. Which way? Uh, if I can get my bearings, um, we will head. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we're going uh, right about <clears throat> east. East? I look northeast. to the sky, yes. and it is northeast, I say, <laughs> confidently again. Ah. I was looking at my compass the whole time, just and it's just spinning wildly because <laughs> of all your, the delirium. Yeah. I trust your internal <laughs> compass, Nathaniel. The I, light will I guide cannot, us. Yeah, I can't trust the tools made by man when I have the one tool in my chest, the only, the only truth. Delirium? <laughs> the charcoal. Mara, you're, you're catching on. Sylvie, thank you for the... Thank you for backing me up there. Northeast, we head. Okay. You gather Got your there. throng of believers and head through the heavy mist and haze that suffuses the area. It is be from the heart pounding fear of the earlier battle. The area is far quieter than it was before. The low howl of the winds coming off the crater here and there, the sound of crumbling rocks and the thick mist and the odd peculiar sight as you walk through the blasted wastelands of the south ward of Drakenheim, passing by ruined buildings, some of which transformed into glass. One building, the outer surface of the plaster and the wattle, wattle and daub, where you look closely at the building and it looks normal, like this bleached stone with this lightly painted um, plaster. But as you pass closer to the building, you realize that the stone is bone and the wattle and daub plaster that comprises the building is skin and flesh. Just otherwise arranged completely normally in the composition of a, of a totally normal building um, that uh, has been that instead of exploding into ruin has just become a building of flesh and bone. In other places, you continue to pass the scorch marks and outlines of people, those who were trapped here on the moment when the great meteor collided with the city itself. What judgment the flame has uh, left upon their souls, none can truly say. Lucretia Matthias believes that the, uh, and teaches that the faithful amongst those that were here were spared and brought in, through baptism by fire to become one with the flame. And that is why the ritual that you will do is to yourselves enact that baptism of fire and be judged for it. For what is true and in your heart will be revealed in this ritual. After some time of travel, time, it feels like hours, but it must only be minutes. It's a short distance away. You come back along the edge of the crater, keeping a wide berth, but still being able to tell that you are um, following along the edge of the crater itself because the buildings here still have that rhythmic pulsing of enacting their final moment where the stones come back almost forming the shape of the buildings they once were before bursting apart again in slow motion reenacting the moment of impact over and over and over again here a wide street one that comes to a roundabout upon which there is a uh, from a roundabout to a wide street opens up into a plaza uh, 
which is right along the edge of the crater. A plaza where some 15 years ago, a young red-headed boy was found screaming about his visions before being brought into the custody of the Amethyst Academy. Here, there is a chapel of the Sacred Fire, the church, the chapel of St. Grisha. The building itself, the ruins of the building are almost lifting up in defiance of gravity. Pieces of the towers and the steeple raise up through the air, forming the shape that they once were, but rather than contracting and expanding like the others, they just lift up straight as if, as if when, if gravity were restored, all the pieces of the building would collapse back down for into their proper place, stacking up in a neat and orderly fashion. The inner part of the chapel glows with a, a soft hue of radiant red fire. Most have never seen this. Take upon it with your eyes and and bask in the oh Mara, you have a question. When you say most have never seen it, uh hasn't everybody who has delirium in their chest seen seen this? Yeah, I was more referring to the ones that don't survive, Ella, the ones that right, right, either that start sense. the journey and don't finish, yeah. Um, but Kate, great question. Oh, you have another follow-up question? Am I asking too many questions? Maybe before asking the question, listen to your your voice and see if that will answer the question for you. I but carry just a few, I, I'm merely a guide on this journey. So the light will give me my answers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, th I think I'm hungry. Thank you. Thank that you. might not be the light, um, actually, Mara. That might just be. This is this is hard. This is it's, this it, is tough. Hey, Mara, just let your eyes bask. Let them bask in the light. Okay, that's what Nathaniel said. Just really open them up. Just let her <laughs> all in. Is it supposed to hurt? Everything hurts oh, okay. in near the crater. All right, good, good. I think I got it. I think my eyes have basked enough. Are, now, are we, we expected? Light. Wait, say sorry, Mara. Are we expected here? Uh, like, there's a light on in that in the church. Do are we? This is merely a passing spot for those who follow the the true flame. Um, is there anyone inside? There is Gresha herself. She waits us. Good. Come. And I and I lead my my pilgrims into the chapel. Okay. Hiking in. Here is the edge of the chapel. Ooh. Not unlike most churches of the sacred fire, the building itself, so the, the bottom most walls are still mostly intact, but the roof all hovers above. Um, Nathaniel, you lead the group in towards the chapel itself. And the the front doors just burst open and, and ajar. The inner courtyard here, the next set of doors heave heavily open as you push through them, opening up into a large vestibule and chamber. Here, um, tending towards a burning brazier of that glows white hot with a pile of sacred charcoal, shards of delirium stacked in place of actual charcoal in the brazier. Tending to the brazier is 
a what a creature perhaps it was once a woman even a flame keeper for she is clad in the in what looked to be the ragged remains of a flame keeper's vestment hunched over a crooked staff and still bearing a chain upon which her holy symbol rests and a torch in her other hand but she is bloated covered in warts stringy hair falling out of her scalp in patches and this hook-shaped nose and these eyes that glow with an octarine light she opens her mouth and you can see her jagged teeth and this pale white tongue inside her skin itself is this combination of a greenish purple in hue the features that she might have had in her past time are completely marred by the mutated wreck she has become she speaks ah nathaniel have you you return again have you brought more fuel for the flame yes saint grisha i bring a new set of pilgrims offering not only themselves but shards of delirium very good very good come closer oh let me have a good look at you come on let everyone, me don't be shy. see come on. the shape of your soul <clears throat> mara doesn't really get afraid of things so she just starts walking forward she's just like okay <laughs> and as you start to walk i'm just like, oh, oh and i oh hold on where are you and like I, I'm kind of walking, and I like turn back. I'm like Nathaniel. We, we know her, right? She's yeah, yeah. Um, uh, everyone, don't be shy. Uh, this is part of why we came here. Uh, we we need to add fuel to uh, the brazier. This is why we got the delirium. So everyone, get close. Um, don't use anyone else's delirium. Don't touch anyone else's delirium. Um, My eyes like dart to her and then dart away like i like i shouldn't be looking at her like i'm like oh oh she's got something on her face i i look her right in the eyes and i'm just like lady grisha madame grisha what what do you what do you prefer to go by you may simply call me reverend mother flame keeper address me as you would any other priestess Though I cannot be saved by the flame, I shall guide your spirits to the treasure of a glorious hereafter. And uh -huh. and the spirits in here too? And I hold up the lantern. Ah! Her eyes glint up and she reaches out. Yes, the lantern of lost souls. Please, please, may I take it? Here, 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 yep. And I again don't make eye contact with her as I give it to her. I'm like the, the souls that we collected of the people who didn't make it. Very good. If you get this far, and it is well that those who have fallen can still fulfill their great destiny. And she holds up the um the lantern, and she opens it. And the flames begin to dance out from the lantern itself. A whirling vortex of souls pours forth, and she begins to speak. It is said that our world is but a point of light in an endless field of darkness. The flame keeps this darkness at bay for what time we have, and our souls are the fuel which keep it alight, but only a pure and righteous soul burns hot enough 
to keep back the darkness, does it not? But what if, what if all souls shone so brightly? What if we could not just be a bulwark against the encroaching darkness and entropy that surrounds us? But what if we could fill the whole universe with light? Do you look up in the night sky and see the other points of light? They are suns, points of light in a vast sea of darkness, fighting the same fight. To look up at the night sky is to see all the evil of the world bearing down upon us. But one day, one point of light will burst forth casting its bright star upon the whole of all the worlds. That will be our world. Oh yes, oh Beautiful. goodness of the flame. If only we could see that day soon come to spread the light out. Ah, oh, it would be glorious. Indeed. When the flame illuminates all, who will tell what darkness will be revealed in the space between the stars? It will be burned away by our righteous faith. Go, come, spirits. Be like moths to the flame. Now. Do you have the ashes? Oh yeah, I got this. Uh, I have this. Uh, I, I I fumble around with the urn, and I'm like, "There's uh, uh, d there's dead people, ma'am, ma'am. There's dead people. The, the ashes." Very good. Weird. She takes them. She opens. You really the like urn. Um, ashes and souls. She takes the ashes into her hands, dusts the ashes around her hands like chalk. Pulls it upon her face. Oh, oh, don't do... Oh, oh. And then she turns to you and reaches the urn. Yes, yes. I, 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 I like, look, glanced over at Nathaniel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I dip my, my finger in and I start, like, I kind of, like, do, like, a little... Yeah, just I, like that. I take like a big scoop of it and I try to come up with something like religious and good to say. When when there's a dark room and you light a torch, the room is brighter. And I think that's good. And then I, I, I mush the ash into my face. Try Mara, good try. What you try, you, you, great try Mara. Ah, ah. Do I have to put ashes on my face too, Nathaniel? Everyone, those who <laughs> have fallen, must face the flame as well. With we honor them. And I kind of dip I my hand it. in a little bit, and I kind of rub it on my cheeks like blush. Don't put it in your mouth; it doesn't taste very good. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, don't breathe it in. Either. They face <sighs> the flame. Okay, the others <laughs> too. Do the same. And then Grusha takes the remainder of the ashes and pours them into the brazier. Remember, we are all but ashes in the end. Now, let me see the shape of your soul. Very good, very good. She's looks at each of the delirium shards. Does it hurt to hold it? Uh, a little. Yes, that's good. Can I like, kind of hop it between two, my both hands? And honestly, it's the least painful thing that I think has happened to me today, so. Same. It is a reminder that not all truths are easy. Not all truths are easy to bear. Not all truths bring peace. 
not all truths make things well. Many truths are uncomfortable. Many truths are ugly. And many truths will not set you free. Many truths will bind you to a great destiny, though. Are you ready to meet your destiny? Yes, that's why I'm here. I am ready to face the flames. Very good. Not far from here is the edge of the crater. Now, you will place your shard in the brazier until it becomes white hot. Then take it into your hand, burning hot from the coals. Then you shall walk into the crater until you have seen your demons. The stain on your soul will reveal itself. I only hope you have the strength to face it. And for those uh, wondering, I'll be waiting at the crater's edge if you uh, get lost or have any questions. Um, pro tip, hold it by like the edges. Um, it just means <laughs> hold it a little bit longer. Uh, it's going to be burning white hot. It's really going to burn you. Uh, so hold it by like the little, uh, any sort of edges uh, uh, or uh, folds in the delirium. Um, it's just going to be a better uh, experience before you uh, drive it into your chest. Thanks, Nathaniel. I, I I toss it into the brazier. Yes. When you see it come, the demon inside you, that is when you will know you are ready. As it takes its shape and form before you, drive the shard into your heart with all your strength. Then turn and face it. Make sure that you affix your own shard before assisting others. <laughs> really important stuff, guys. Everyone listening? Edda? Edda, why are you fainting? Listen. <laughs> is, is Edda okay? Does she, does she need any help? She says, I've come this far. Okay. Surprisingly, right. I mean. You're doing uh, great, Edda. <laughs> I see your eyes up here, okay? We're not repeating. We're not repeating any of this. This is very... Uh, Sacramental. So go into the crater. When I see my inner demons, I'm going to jam this white hot piece of delirium into my heart and turn and face my demons and be better. Be more attuned to, to, to the path, to the light. To the flames. Okay. You there are you mortal. Go. And thus you have the stain of sin upon your very soul. I knew it. But that sin cannot bear the power of the flame. And in so doing, in time, it will rip itself from your body. Then you will destroy it, and you shall be pure. Okay, Mara. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come. Certainly. Let's let's banish our demons together. Okay. You're both strong, and I believe that you can accomplish this final task. And I am so pumped to banish my demons that I get up there close to the brazier. I'm like, come on, Mara, come on, Bunkies. Yeah. I'm here. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> ready? The shards Three. burn. The shards are, are still burning. Are you ready? Uh, I think I was born ready. Like <laughs> okay. You reach into the flames and pull the shard. It burns white hot. You each take six points of fire damage. Gresha gestures quickly to the crater before it consumes you. Oh, 
I, I'm so happy that I got that uh, that that speech earlier. I, I feel like this isn't as hot anymore because of it. And it's I, I go, hot. it's it's pretty hot. <laughs> I'm just like shuffling along. I'm like, Ooh, oh. the others in the group grab their shards out and screaming. The throng of you, like a screaming mob, race down the ruined street. <laughs> With the shards and I just kind over of your calmly heads. walk behind them, <laughs> just kind of like following them at oh, a first pace. Nathaniel, you know what happens next. Make sure that none, that some will not be strong enough still. You know what must be done. Yep. Um, we just got to tame the demons, and if we can't tame them, so be it. You Do can... not leave any shards of those who fall behind. I will return them to the brazier. Racing towards the crater's edge with your shards, you feel the heat pulsing and radiating off of the off of it its energy. It's melting the flesh of your hand, leaving scars and burns and welts and blisters at the edge it hurts like nothing else the re- uh, the the you come towards the edge of a crater the crater sliding down clumsily into the edge as you feel the energies pulse through you give me a wisdom saving throw Twenty-three. I got a twelve. Okay. You don't sink into complete delirium because of the delirium, but images race through your minds of life and worlds beyond, of destiny, of fate, of angels and demons. The shape of your soul reveals itself. What do you see? I see just beams of explosions of light coming from this like centerpiece that's so dense with what would be like darkness, but like it's almost so dense. It's like, it's still light. It's crazy. Just And Mara? Um, Makes that sound. I see... I see what resembles the ghosts of like helpless people and the darkness reaching out towards them. And I see me defending and batting away the darkness and protecting those who cannot protect themselves. The others cry out and wail, delirious at the edge of the crater. Moments pass, moments that feel like hours, days, perhaps even. The pain is excruciating, but your faith holds you to this moment. As your thoughts drift through the pain of this moment, one thing comes to the fore of your mind. If you had to describe it, what it looked like, if it was a beast, a monster given form. What does the greatest sin look like to you, Mara? I see... Oh man, are we talking like physically or can it be an abstract concept? Please describe it in physical terms. All right, it's... um. It's darkness and vile essence just turned into a, a form given given life and and I see it and it's lurching towards me, trying to envelop me in the darkness. And I feel the light inside of me trying to to fight it back, but it's it's this hulking mass of just 
dark energy that is attempting to wrap itself around me. Okay. And Sylvie, if you had to imagine what the greatest sin looks like, if it could be made manifest, what do you imagine it as? So I imagine, again, this, this darkness that is coming, but it actually comes in the form of myself in darkness. So think of it like my eyes are completely dark. My skin is as dark as it can go. I almost have these like darkness radiating like my hair. And I can see that um, it's holding just these pieces of um, lost souls and it's dragging them along with it. Um, the, the most sin that I could consider is that I would be the one to drag people into the darkness. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. And Nathaniel, what, uh, um, what I'm going to have you, you, you do is there are seven remaining survivors. Roll me a D6 hmm. for each of them. <laughs> So, like, Mina sees um, uh, a two-handed weapon. Um, it's, it's, uh, I rolled a three. <laughs> okay. You can roll them all at the same time if you want to. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, how many more? Um, I need, uh, I need you to roll six, six of them. So. Okay. Uh, so, I got a three, a three, a two, a two, a four, and a five. Okay. Two, the, two, three, three, four, five. And Mara and Sylvie, you can each roll me a d6 as well. Five. One. Okay. Uh-oh. Mara. All right. I saw like 30 possums. That's what I saw. <laughs> and they were like kind of becoming a person because possums, um, they overtook my farmland when i was younger um and they were the the uh uh the manifestation of like uh creatures coming in from wilderness taking over um civilization and and, and and man's sin was to uh feed them and let them grow accustomed to uh our way of life and they took over wow that's dark yeah it was pretty dark <laughs> okay and they did like a Voltron thing. They like kind of formed up. It's awful. <laughs> Voltron, it's canon. <laughs> it's As canon we enough. head back to the crater's edge, we'll just use uh, a different section of our map from before. Um, As Nathaniel and the group of you uh, are over here. So we'll use this, this area here. Oh, we're way out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're back at the edge of the crater, feeling the, these visions come to you. And um, Sylvie, you see, you feel in, the, in that moment that that image of sin that you imagine it is not you. It is separate from you. It is different from you. It is apart from you. It was a part from you, but now it stands a part from you. Literally, it stands apart from you. It's standing in front of you. It is a massive creature almost in the shape of your own body, uh, of yourself, but skeletal and emaciated. And it is gathering, uh, and in its heart, its rib cage is burst open. And in its heart, it is torturing a smaller version of yourself, hanging out, grasping for help. Mara, you feel the same way. You see these shadows ripping and roiling shadows that were your shadow but are not your shadow anymore but they there are flittering 
and flying about. Nathaniel, you see these shapes. <laughs> yeah, I've been here. Okay, so these are your demons. You're confronting your demons, everyone. Um, what and, I really need you to do is focus. And at the same time, the others as well, they imagine the shapes of corpulent forms bursting out from them. Nathaniel, it's time. Okay, everyone, drive the delirium into your chest. You really want to drive it in there. You do not want to try this three or four times. Um, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people go down when they're trying to do like a second or third attempt. You really want to get on the first one. You get the most momentum. Trust you can do it. We're not looking for we're not looking for strength. We're looking for follow through. Okay. Mario, you ready? Uh, 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 yeah, yes. I I slam it into my heart. Okay. Stab it into the my two chest. of you can make Constitution saving throws, and Joe, I'm gonna have you roll a D6 for each of the other survivors. Uh, uh, Oh, wait, do I have to roll this with this advantage? It's a saving throw, not an ability check. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, I didn't 14? do well. 14? 14? Yeah. And... I, I got a 10. Okay. <laughs> you both <laughs> take... 20 points of necrotic damage. <sighs> Um, and your hit point maximum is reduced by that much. By 20? Yep. And Joe, if you can please uh, roll 1d6 D for each uh, of our other friends here. So I have a 1, a 1, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 3, and a 5. Okay, so you rolled three ones. Mm hmm. Okay. Krista, Anna, and Katya. What's up, Jill? So, does it my hit point max go to what my current HP is, or does it go like my max HP minus 20? Your max HP, have temp minus HP. Yeah. Cause, so, cause you lose temp the temp HP. HP, and then your max HP is reduced by 20. Okay. Because oh. my current hit points was technically above that because. Of that, but I guess it just goes down to whatever yeah. the max HP yeah. is. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Um, Edda, Krista, and Katya scream out in horrific pain uh, as they release their shards and it falls from their sides. They they did they didn't push the shards in far enough. Uh, Edda, pick up your shard. Sylvie and Marlo, you two have. Um, and so while you have, um, your shards hold fast in your flesh and you feel things, you feel this fire burning in your hearts. It's like the world is clearer, but the demons are in front of you and it is time to face them. Roll for initiative. <laughs> This is actually the easy part, everybody. Nice. Uh, Facing your demons. I got a 21. Seven. Uh, seven. Four. I'm busy running around picking up Edda's shard. She dropped it. Um, Krista, you too. Uh, guys, I said follow through. Uh, it's really important that you use, hold it with both hands. Really drive it in there. And it's got to stay in there. Don't flake and out at the last second. Mara and Sylvie, you can each roll initiative for your demons. <laughs> what do they, do they have a plus at all? I I know what they are. I'll, I'll add them in. Nine. Nine, I rolled a nine. I rolled a five. Okay. Good. Unless they have a plus 15. Sylvie, what did you get for your own initiative? Seven. Okay. Look at that demon. It's a. Oh, it's a big one. 
It has a little, a little Sylvie. <laughs> yeah, that's like, not good. Like I'm the biggest one. I'm more afraid of Sylvie's demons than I am of my own. <laughs> yeah. We're, we can all be afraid of Sylvie's demons. She carries a lot with her, a lot of sin. The uh, brightest flames cast the longest shadows, okay? The Syl does, Sylvie. This mean, does this mean Sylvie has the largest inner demons out of all of us? I, yeah, apparently Oh, yeah, so. she's fighting the biggest battles. Uh, <laughs> was inside until now. Um, the, it's You know, it's crazy. The person you think is closest to the light is actually the one with the biggest inner demons. Who would have thought? <laughs> okay. So, and, and Mara, your your demons flitter and fl uh, fly uh, around you as well. Um, so, uh, with with that, it is time to confront your own inner demons. Mara, what are you going to do? Uh, so, seeing the shadow reaching out towards me, I go into a rage. And I'm going to attack the um uh this guy right here and i'm gonna attack recklessly ah. and i uh crit oh, <laughs> yeah. kill uh, your demons so that's gonna be okay get them demons so crit with uh everything so i'm raging reckless it's the first attack of the round and i'm using great weapon master yeah you your chart eh. Uh, yeah, so that's um, uh, 43 damage. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> that's a T-Rex right there. <laughs> I love attacking I recklessly. Advantage is great. The demon, uh, the uh, made manifest, the demon is but shadowy energy, and you cleave into it with radiant light, and it cries out... <laughs> You see for a moment with a flash of recognition that the that the the two demons resemble yourself and your sister vying for supremacy in your parents' hearts. Damn her. Um <laughs> but the thing's still standing? Yes. Nah. Uh so I yell out and I say, The light inside me will fight back my own darkness. And I strike again at the creature. Uh, still recklessly getting a uh, 29. Also a hit. Uh, yeah. Get it, Mara. And that's just going to be... All right. Uh, 27 damage. Cleaving it in twain, its shadowy energies dissipate. All right. And... Uh, because I killed it, I get to make my Great Weapon Master attack on the final one. Yeah. So I attempt to attack that one as well, getting a 26. A hit. Which will be... <laughs> uh, so that's going to be 20 more damage. Nice. And I stay true, and I roar still thinking I'm a T-Rex a little bit, and I just scream at the darkness's face with a mighty, mighty yell. All right. Um, the demon flutters in and out of uh, reality and existence and strikes you back with advantage because of your... Uh, uh, you struck recklessly. Um, yeah. And it gets an 18 to hit. Uh, that'll do it. Okay. Stabbing inside back towards your own very soul, its psychic energies reverberate in your own mind, uh, and you take 20 points of psychic damage. So I can't have that. That's a shame, and I'm scared now. Um, and with, with that, as it strikes back out, it disappears into a puff of smoke. Well, that wasn't that bad. I, I think I did it. Sylvie, it is your turn. Um, okay. I say, the flames guide me, the flames will out, and I cast Spiritual Weapon. 
Actually, doesn't my demon go before me? It got a nine and I got a seven. Oh, your demon does go before you. Sorry. Sweet, I got sweet. those mixed up. Okay, I was like, wait so, up. Sylvie, uh, thank you for being honest. Uh, Sylvie, your demon cries out, Let me all embrace your darkness. Okay. And it um, strides forward and it um claws at you uh um it it swipes with its claws once at sylvie and once at mara hey getting get a, your demons uh, out of here uh, um, <laughs> getting a 28 to hit mara oh and a 13 oh, yes. to hit sylvie does not i dodged my demon mara you take um 14 points of slashing damage and the horrendous necrotic energy from its claws rent into you, dealing an additional 20 points of necrotic damage. Sorry, Mara! Uh, gonna... Ow. My demons are strong! <laughs> uh, those were two separate attacks, right? So I can only half one of them? Uh, the, um, the, the, it's one attack okay. that does slashing damage and then necrotic damage. So you okay, can so half can the only... slashing, but you can't affect the necrotic damage at all. Because cool, you're, cool, you're, cool. Um, and then... Sylvie, why? My demons are strong. Is this your pent-up anger towards me and my inability to understand the light as good as you? Not is that what you. this is? I love you, Mara. No, it's fine. Okay, and then... The, the creature... reaches its arms over its head and a vortex of necrotic energy spills out from it uh, I think, Nathaniel, you're, you're just out of range. Yeah, you are. But Sylvie and Mara and uh, need to make uh -oh. constitution saving throws. And so does... Uh, and, Nathaniel, you can roll con Patrizia. saves for Patriza and uh, Bernard. What type of saving throw? Constitution. Uh, Patriza got one and Bernard 18. got six. Okay, they both fail. 18. Horrendously. I got a 13. Okay. Uh, in that case, Mara, you take 44 necrotic damage. And Sylvie, you take 20, uh, uh, you take half that, 22. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, and uh, the necrotic energy uh, completely rips through um, both uh, uh, Ber Berthold and Patriza. <laughs> uh, Mara goes down. Mara! Mara! Sylvie, it is your turn. Um, if I cast spiritual weapon, I can only cast a cantrip, right? As because it's a bonus action. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah. If Instead, you, your your if you cast either of your bonus action spells like spiritual weapon or healing word, you can only cast a cantrip with your main action. And instead, I am going to cast Wall of Fire around my demon in a circle. Uh, okay. I, uh, uh, can I choose to, for it to be just around the demon, facing inward? I think I can, what is it? Up to a certain amount, right? Yeah, I think so. Up to 20 feet in diameter, so yeah. I make it 10 feet. Okay. And I say, demon face the flames. Okay, so you want to enwrap it with uh, with uh, a wall of fire? Yeah, absolutely. I will put a ring of fire around it. Nice move. There we go. So you uh, completely encircle it, turning the flames inward. Does it make us? It does it make a saving Ex throw right now? Yeah. Uh, when it appears, each creature with the area must take a dex saving throw. Okay, I get a six. 16 was the okay meet. so one, two, three, four, five. one more there it is oh. 20 fire damage okay nice as a creature of your own soul it is uh somewhat resistant to the uh to the flames itself but uh that will still uh deal some damage to it as well 
Mara, I'm coming for you! Okay. Nathaniel, it is your turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to run up to uh, Mara. Okay. And uh, I'm going to feed her do I have a do I have a health potion? I have a potion of healing, a greater potion of healing, like strapped to my belt. And I take that out and I jam it down your throat. That's twenty hit points. Okay. As Patricia and Bertolt fall with their their shards embedded in their chests, there's a flash of brilliant energy. And you can see just the outline of their spirits pulled into the delirium shard in their chests as the shards become golden and radiant with light. That's what we're aiming for, everybody. We're, that is the key. Is it end result, though, right, Nathaniel? Not, not necessarily now? We're not trying to skip ahead anywhere, but that is a desired conclusion. I, I'm on the ground and I raise my hand. Yes, Mara. Are we allowed to kill other people's demons? Oh, yeah. You can go ham. Um, especially you, Mara. The pilgrims. Krista, Edda, and Katya each attempt to jam their shards into their chests themselves and manage to get them in there, but they're heavily wounded uh, by that. Um, and in the process, though, their own inner demons uh, reach out to attack each of them. Uh, Edda's demon misses. Krista's demon hits her. Katja's demon misses. <laughs> Edda. Uh, Mina's demon misses. Edda, failed. Dominic's demon uh, hits him. Dominic is wounded. I'm just gonna mark. Uh, I, I'm gonna use uh, mark them red if they've been uh, if they've been wounded. Edda <laughs> is not. She is fine. Uh, so yeah, Katja and Dominic have been wounded by their own inner demons. And then Patriza uh, and Berthold's demons begin to feed on their flesh. Uh, it's a, it's a, a side effect um, of the ritual. What are you going to do? Mara, it is your turn. Um, all right. You know what? Um, I'm going to rage again. So I climb back to my feet. Uh, start letting out a series of battle cries as I spin my glaive around. And I'm like, Sylvie, your demon's a jerk! I and, know! and I just start wailing on um, Sylvie's demon. Okay, it is surrounded by a wall of fire. So, oh, um, But I have a 10-foot reach with my glaive if okay. it's right around it. Yeah, so I will give you disadvantage on the attack roll. Uh, you know it's there, but you're attacking through the wall of flame. It's basically totally obscured from you. I will attack recklessly, making it a normal attack. Okay. 22 to hit. That's a hit. Woo! All right. So that's going to be uh, 25 damage. Nice. And I'm going to swing again. Uh, also getting a 25 to hit. Yeah. And now we are looking at 25 damage. 50 damage in one go. Respectable. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use the butt end of my weapon now. Yep. Uh, Finish it. That's a 20 to hit. You're hitting something in the wall of fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's connecting. And I get, uh, Eight damage. That's actually Her hand's already burned, so you don't feel the the heat from. Did the you not grab up and master on, on the butt end? Oh yes, I did. So that's eighteen. Or sorry. Okay. Woo. Yeah. Um, that's actually a really good combo. Using a reach weapon through a wall of fire works really, really nicely, actually. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Mara, your demon uh, coalesces. Again, I thought I killed you. <laughs> uh, it lumbers forward. <laughs> man, my demons always sneaking up on me. I always think I got rid of them, and then they're bam, right there again. Uh, and it stabs you. 
No. Uh, getting a uh, 17 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Uh, and you are going to take... Thirteen points of psychic damage, as it torments your mind and visions of uh, your uh, childhood uh, spring before your mind. Uh, These demons are so rude. <laughs> I thought he was dead. I th- uh, oh. As I get stabbed in the back by my own shadow. Okay, ah! uh, uh, Sylvie's demon does not recharge its soul rend ability. <laughs> Oh, good. Soul rend. That sounds just like it looked. Uh, awful. Uh, roll damage for it starting in the area of the wall of fire. Two, 28. Okay. Woo. Um, and so it has to spend. Uh, okay, 28 damage. So it can just walk through it. It doesn't it doesn't stop its movement though. Yeah. Okay. So what it does is the Sylvie, your demon um burns, burns, burns in the ring of fire. Um, <laughs> um and it steps out from the the ring of flames. Um and I'm gonna- does it get an opportunity attack from me and Nathaniel? Uh, it hasn't actually left your reach because you have a 10 foot reach. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to claw Nathaniel and Sylvie. Sorry, right, Nathaniel! Uh, it gets a 13 against Nathaniel and a 22 against Sylvie. So there's like a claw it comes through this fire wall of fire that I think is empty or, or or something and it just like scratches me <laughs> ah! uh, 13 hits you oh yeah i uh i ran out of mage armor because okay. it, it was like we spent a day in the acid okay. rain <laughs> so it hits but i have a question yeah as my reaction as a warcaster i can use it to use a spell but does that mean i can't use a spell on my turn no you you can but uh it hasn't provoked an attack of opportunity from you warcaster oh, no as a reaction I can use a react. Oh, no, it's an opportunity yeah, check. Yeah. Never mind. You're right. You're right. You're right. You both take 10 slashing damage from the claws. And then uh, the claws dig into you with necrotic power, dealing another 20 points of necrotic damage each. Ah! Uh, <laughs> demons are strong! And I need concentration checks from both of you. If you're concentrating mm-hmm. on a spell. Oh, thankfully, uh, I'm not. I I'm just guess I'm dying. not. <laughs> is wait oh well if I concentrating, hold on, hold on, hold on. on not getting scratched oh it's not working uh, 18. Effort. No, uh, you 18. okay you're all good then finally sylvie's horrific demon um gestures out um to the um still breathing body of Bertolt. And it, a tendril, like its intestines, reaches out and pulls um, the unconscious form of Berthold into it, the rib cage of oh. the demon, and begins suckling out all of the uh, Berthold's vitals. Stop! Stop that! Sorry, Berthold. <laughs> Sylvie, so why is there a soul-sucking demon inside of you? Why? What? What? I have never encountered a, a pilgrim with such buried uh, sin. Mine is a Sylvie. fluttering shadow. The Mine stronger is just the a... light, the longer the shadow. It's a Mine very long possums. shadow. I had My like demons are, are fluttering dark butterflies, and yours is a monster that eats people's souls for breakfast. What? Sylvie. All I'm saying is I'm capable of a lot of things, and I've chosen the light, so you're lucky I'm on your side, okay? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me not to get on your bad side. Exactly. You're lucky. Except I'm already on your bad side because it's already tried to kill me. It's really, it already killed you once. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lot of repressed. <laughs> it's just 
just a lot of just really lot pushing it down there. Just, really just, just, just a moment to say you know if you are struggling in life if you feel like you are struggling with your demons there's plenty of resources out there people love you and want you to get help yeah yes <laughs> it's a good time to talk about that <laughs> It is very important. It's very but also, important. your demons don't come to life as a giant monster that you have to then fight. Although maybe it would be cooler if it did. I think life would be a lot simpler if it were like if physically I could just punch my demons in the demons. face. Yeah, yeah, It'd be a yeah. Lot easier. yeah. Just fight a physical manifestation of my demons. <laughs> Sylvie gets the opportunity. Whose turn is it? What's happening? Uh, it is Sylvie's turn. Oh, oh, okay, cool. cool. Um, so it's not technically in the Ring of Fire anymore, even though it's uh, a larger. It's uh, it's still in there. Um, okay. It, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it ended its turn there. So it took the damage again. Um, it's it's still in it's it's still in there. It is somewhat resistant to the fire, but it's it it's where it wants to be. It wants to kill people. True. True. Okay. So I'm going to use my action to use one of my channel divinity to uh radiance of dawn so uh, i present my holy symbol of the flame to dispel any magical darkness each hostile cre creature that doesn't have total cover must make a con saving throw okay so uh mara's demon gets a natural one your demon gets an 11 uh and what's the r range on it 30 feet uh, thirty feet. So, uh, everyone else is oh, demons. yeah, yeah. Uh, so Chris's demon gets a fourteen. Nope. Edda's demon gets a twelve. Nope. Katja's demon gets a fifteen. Nope. Mina's demon gets a six. Nope. Dominant's demon gets a three. <laughs> nope. Uh, Patrice's demon gets a nineteen. Yes. And uh, Bernhardt's demon gets a sixteen. That matches. Okay. Okay, so y'all get um <laughs> eighteen radiant damage. Okay. Uh that destroys everyone's demons. Woo! <laughs> Light comes forth from my soul and clears away the demons. Except for your own demon. Except for my own <laughs> demon. And then I'm gonna use um as a bonus action um my spiritual weapon. Um so I get to attack with that, and that's a 17 plus eight. Um so 25 to hit with my spiritual weapon. Uh that's a hit. Nice. Um, oh, did I cast nice. Um, okay, and then sorry, that is eight damage, and yeah. I put it on the side, um, like away from the the flame. So it's almost like I'm, I know it won't push it back, but I'm trying to like use my spiritual weapon, the flaming sword of Ignatius, to like jab it back. Yeah, that sounds great. I'll uh, I will put uh, a little weapon. Mark her down. Woo! Ignatius! <laughs> there. You can kind of see that. I need, I need, definitely need a better spiritual weapon uh, marker. Okay. Um, Nathaniel, it is your turn. Uh, everybody, turn, turn to Sylvie. See, she has banished your demons, uh, for she is strong with the light. Now, she has her own demons still to deal with. So I need everyone to focus on making sure their shard is in place. Once your shard is in place, let's help Sylvie conquer her demons. And um, <laughs> this is a group session. <laughs> yeah, this is a. Uh, We're all in this together. Yeah, we, this is a, a team effort. Um, and I'm gonna cast uh, haste uh, on uh, Mara. And uh, go get a Mara. <laughs> oh man, can you can you just quickly remind me everything that haste does? Uh, uh, it gives you an extra attack, plus 30 feet to your speed, plus two to your AC and dexterity saving throws. Cool, 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 cool. Sounds sounds great. Oh, man. <laughs> the the bolstered pilgrims uh, charge forth through the through the waters. Uh, Etta kind of stands up uh, and, and with their, their hearts glowing, 
with glowing hearts, just like a group, a good group of Canadians. Um, they come forth with their, with their weapons, um, and get a few, a few rough hits in on, uh, Sylvie's demon dealing about 10 points of damage to it. Um, crying out for the flame, be the light you want to see in the world. Cast away, I'll down, burn away. You're my favorite group. You're just, I have to say you're my favorite and second group. Uh, Mara, it is your turn. I um, I rush around Nathaniel, and you hear me scream uh, something along the lines of, Sylvie, I will destroy your darkness! And um, you see my, my glaive start to glow as I run towards this, this beast, and uh, I'm going to attack recklessly with my uh, many, many attacks, and I'm whirlwind speed. You can barely even see me. I, like, leap through the fires and, like, just start... Uh, chopping in so fast that you can barely make out. And we're going to go with a 27 to hit with my glowing radiant glaive. That is a hit. Uh, That's going to be 30 damage. Woo! And then I'm going to attack again. Uh, Yeah, getting a 24. Uh, uh, 22 more damage. You hack and slash into its body, but it still stands. I, I poke it with the butt end. You're such strong demons. Only getting a nine. The butt end That's doesn't do much. Yeah. The haste attack. Will it follow through? Yeah, you still have your haste oh, attack. Oh, my haste attack, right. Okay, one one final. 21. It's a hit! Ooh. I don't think you Getting, can... Uh, that's going to be... 27 more damage. What happens? So, I get hasted, and you just see me let out this... This roar as I charge so quick, just past Nathaniel, you don't even notice. And um, I start, it's it's a little unsettling because like I this thing looks somewhat similar to Sylvie. And so I start just hacking parts of yeah, it's supposed to look like a emaciated dark version of you. So I'm screaming like, die, Sylvie, die! <laughs> and like just cutting off parts of it. I like start jabbing at its thing in its chest and you just see like i'm like almost like appearing on multiple sides of it because of my haste i'm like all over around it just like chopping off parts of it and pieces of it screaming uh for sylvie to die and then as i stand over a bloody mound of pieces i i like start to calm down a little and i turn to sylvie and i'm like oh that was close it's good to see you're okay and I just look like I'm not even like terrified of the the demon. I'm more terrified. Like, uh, yeah, this, you did a great job killing me. Uh, appreciate your, that. Your Mara. darkness. It was. I was. You had a lot of a, lo- a lot of darkness. So. <sighs> just repressed sins and all that. But we oh. did it. But we wow. did it. What can and I say? The flame came through us, and look, we have our delirium in our chests. I oh, mean, yeah. the charcoal. I mean, you're welcome, Sylvie. You're welcome. Thank you. And also, you know, you shine really bright for somebody with so much darkness. Thank you. I do, yeah. Fire, fire, burning bright, I light the sky, turn back the night. We did it! Yeah, you have. You have completed your pilgrimage. And it's now time to make the long road back again. Nathaniel, you've got some survivors. <laughs> I'm surprised and astonished, and I'm just so proud of each and every one of you. <laughs> you really came together, and there shouldn't be this many alive. And Especially this is going to look up. really good uh, for my uh, for the creation of Matthias. She's really going to be surprised. There's no way Edda should be here right now. <laughs> and that is that is the miracle. The miracle is Edda survived. 
And uh, up top, baby. Woo. <laughs> we did it. We did it. You guys did it. Okay? You really came together. You came together for the light. You fought back your demons. Mostly Sylvie uh, near the end there. Uh, Mara, cleanup crew. Well done, everyone. Um, and just remember, this is what's going to unify you uh, as you go forward. Uh, this is this is the most important part of the journey. Now you see the truth. Now you feel the light burning inside you. Um, as we, but like, wow, there's it's no way warm. that you should all be alive right now. Mara, you have another question. Uh, it's more of a statement, uh, Nathaniel. <laughs> I I just wanted to say thank you. I. I, I've been following the light without really knowing what it was, but your guidance has, has helped me understand the light that was inside of me all along. So, so thank you. It's uh, beautiful. You're, you're a good tour guide. And uh, I feel uh, my chest hurts a little, but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Get used to it. It won't go away. <laughs> yeah. The, the piece of delirium just, always burns a little bit it's like there's a fire in your heart the the flesh but as you breathe in the the it's like the haze doesn't bother you anymore the 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 pain and misery of this area is just a reflection of of the pain and misery of mortal life a temporary state before a glorious new age of brightness to come uh, am I allowed to carry Edda now, or does she still have to go back on her own? Nathaniel? Um, Edda, you, how do you feel? You must feel Edda has stronger. newfound strength, and Mina, um, as you all look at the, 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 as the ritual completes itself, all your hit points are all restored. And in fact, oh. Edda has a spring in her step like she didn't before, and Mina's arm has grown back. Whoa! These are but a taste of the miracles that come by pledging to the great falling fire. Mar, are, are we like lizards now? Like if I lose a limb, it will just grow back because of the delirium? I want you to just kind of keep that one. That would, that's, that's an inner voice uh, answer. L the light. Yeah, let's ask the light about that one. Yes. It is as if you've been reborn and remade once again. You have been made whole spiritually and physically. Whatever burdens of darkness you carried with you before have been pushed out of your bodies, replaced like a by a burning weight. brightness. Out of me. Like, I feel like... There was a lot happening. It was really heavy inside, and now it's just I feel like a feather. I feel like the light. Being able to travel and, and do my great work. Oh, yeah, so goodness, so flame. I'm ready. But there are still the two fallen, Patriza and Bernhardt. They're glowing golden delirium shards in the ruin of their bodies which Nathaniel you gather up and will bring back to Lucretia Matthias the journey back is long but not fraught with the dangers of before you walk back with a clarity that you did not have before a light in the spring in your steps carrying you forth onto a glorious new destiny. Ed, are you skipping? Are you skipping along right now? Yeah. I feel 40 years younger. <laughs> Just so happy for you. I don't. You must feel like 80 then. Like <laughs> <laughs> Look, everyone so experiences old. the light, the reborn <laughs> differently. Sometimes you were reborn like physically, some reborn more you know spirit. i do i do feel a little younger like maybe maybe i was born like three months earlier than i actually was you know or three months later yeah because younger makes sense so proud of you mara thanks You've come so far since Thank we you. first met you come so much more eloquent with your speakings of the flame i'm working on it the light's <laughs> always just been kind of 
a thing inside. I've never really tried to, to, to speak like you guys do. So it's a work in progress. Mm. Uh, light be with you. Light be with you. Light you're not sure. You. If you're not sure, light be with you. The You head back through the ruins, the eerie and cursed, blasted landscape, not bothering you like it does before. You can see that this is but a tr time of transition for the pain and suffering that you felt before now is reflected in the pain and suffering of this world. Just a brief struggle before a new and glorious age. And as you come back to the Abbey of St. Selena's, its walls of safety, a procession of the other followers greet you and welcome you back with open arms and the offers of a hot meal. It is there, gathered outside the chapel, at the chapel steps, that Lucretia Matthias beckons as you come back in to the flock, and she speaks. Nathaniel, you've done well. You've guided brilliant souls to their destiny, whether here in this world or elsewhere with the flame itself. Make no mistake, though you have not died in body, the life you left behind is over now. Who you were died before the crater. You may now take up a new life in service of the sacred fire. One in service of the light itself. Through you, the flame will make this world anew. Welcome. And we're a little bit early, but I think that that's where we will uh, wrap things up for this evening. I have uh, one thing I want to ask of Sylvia Mara. Yeah. Before you go, will you please fill out these comment cards <laughs> to let uh, Lucretia Mathias know the rating is a zero to five system on satisfaction. Um, <laughs> and it will really help with my journey. Thank you. Uh, here where it says, did you feel in danger at any point? Like, like, do I give it a five because definitely, or is it like a one because definitely like, wait, where does I'm that... actually not allowed to interfere with the comment card system. Um, so you'll have to just kind of, again, refer I'll just, to your I'll just voice. give you fives. I'm sixes, just giving you fives. Sixes all around. So well it goes to six. I'm putting six because I believe he did a great job for his second Oh, because second once time. again, Sylvie has to go above and beyond. As always, I have <laughs> a demon that went above and beyond. We killed the demon going above and beyond. And the camera, Ratings. the yes. camera, like it fades out as, as Sylvie and Mara are bickering. Playfully over bicker the over the comment cuts. <laughs> Well, that was a real blast. Um, such a different group. Uh, it's so f amazing to see how much comedy you can bring to all of my very serious factions. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me to play a one shot and not expect it to be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> with, with Doesn't that. Doesn't be a one shot to be ridiculous. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's, it's true. <laughs> we do it. Oh. So uh, that is just a taste of uh, the world of the crater and the inner worlds of the followers of the falling fire. We have two more factions to tackle in our untold tales of Drakenheim, the Silver Order and the Hooded Lanterns. What are we thinking? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Is do that we a let question? The, we take a do we let the viewers decide? Do we... Uh... Well, maybe we'll give a little bit of a taste of what we're thinking about. Um, for those of you very interested, when we visit the Hooded Lanterns, we're going to go back in time to the very first expedition the Hooded Lanterns ever launched to the ruins of Drakenheim before any of the other factions had a foothold in the city. For the Silver Order, 
We're thinking of doing some sort of aerial assault with some of the Silver Order's Griffin cavalry. Uh, and the players have been talking about on both sides uh, either doing a group of all rangers or a group of all paladins. I think I think that was some of the conversation that was coming around of a group yeah. of all uh, uh, an all paladin group or an all ranger group for each of these. Uh, so uh, have any of you started to think about some of your character ideas yet for those? Uh, <laughs> loosely, uh, loosely. Uh, I, oh, I want to play uh, uh, Sven. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't need to know more. Oh wait, no. Yeah. Sten. Yeah. Sten. 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 That's right. I already forgot his name. That's how much I care. <laughs> you should definitely play a Sten. Please play definitely a Sten. Definitely play a Sten. Please play a Sten. <laughs> I feel and people have asked for it. Um, it. It's something I've been coming around with. I just. It's it's beautiful because Sten is enough. Of a of a thing in Drakenheim that like people know who he is if they've seen the episode, but he's not enough of a thing for it to actually get in the way of any role playing you want to do. <laughs> so you can make Sten whoever, but I think he's got to be curious. That's, you, that's he's got to be a dreamer too. <laughs> Big dreams, family man. <laughs> he's got a lot of ambition. He's really gonna go places. <laughs> <laughs> that that'll we're be a awful. lot of fun. So uh, we're 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 gonna mull that over uh, for the next the next couple of days. We would love to hear uh, what uh, what you uh, want to see see next. Once we get through the rest of our factions, um, I think the next couple of weeks are gonna be telling at least here in Toronto uh, and let us uh, let us really see quite clearly what how things are gonna unfold. I think at the very least we're gonna let things finish up with the untold tales before we make the the final like the next decision on basically um depending on how things are going and what the guidance is on whether or not we are going to resume shadows of drakenheim remotely uh or not um basically the for for those of you wondering uh once we get through the rest of the untold tales we're going to go back to shadows of drakenheim whether or not um, that means where we continue to do so remotely or not uh we feel very very confident playing online now together um i think i feel like we're like 90 percent there and so um at that point if it, if it's still not viable for us uh to continue playing together in person which you know in four in, in a month it still might not be um so um that that's kind of where we lie with with that side of of, of things we still want to do things quite smartly uh because you know, we we have uh, lots of family and loved ones that we also want to make sure are kept safe through through all this uh, all this stuff. So, yeah, indeed, indeed. And you know, my my basement is a very small environment. So, <laughs> yeah, the camera isn't a wide enough shot to stay uh, the appropriate amount of space. Yeah. Away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's gone really really well. I I've enjoyed using Roll Twenty. I think it's added a lot to to the the game, and I, I feel that with some good maps and stuff like that, we could do a pretty good uh, a pretty good job of it. Uh, if we do go, uh, if we have to play Shadows of Drakenheim for a couple episodes this way, I think we might need to do some sort of recap episode or like uh, or something like that to bring back into it. It was good to have a little bit of a segue with uh, with we could uh, even. Uh... We could maybe like do like a and a one of the days maybe leading up to it, just like about season two of Drakenheim, what's happened so far, where our characters are at and, you know, or something, something. Yeah. We, yeah. we should do a little catch up or like a recap. Yeah. I, Even I, for us. I, I, I think so. I, I think that the, the first episode back, we might not pick up the story exactly where we left off. We might need to kind of do a bit of a, here we are again sort of thing. And this is the story so far sort of thing. So, cause I might need that too. <laughs> yeah. I actually like, I might, I was, I was thinking of listening to Drakenheim again, but I might just go and listen to or, or Shadows. watch Shadows just Same. to get those, those yeah. episodes in my head again. Yeah. 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 So uh, as, um, uh, as always a uh, massive thank you um, to, uh, everyone uh for for playing uh in 
our campaign, Jill, Joe, and Kelly for coming up with amazing characters uh, for all this. And a big thank you to all the other folks behind the scenes, Kyle, Kirsten, and whatnot, who, well, they can't necessarily participate, are still a big part of our team in our hearts. Um, so that's uh, uh, a big thank you out there. And a huge thank you to Monty Martin, our dungeon master, for putting together uh, all of these one shots <laughs> and all of these crazy situations Amazing. with all these factions. It's been an absolute treat to play in. So thank you. And uh, with uh, with that, um, Kelly and I, be sure to check us out at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes, where Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for players and guides for dungeon masters. Uh, what do we got coming this week, Kelly? Uh, we're taking a look at dual wielding. Woo! Oh, Ooh, yeah. Rudy. Playing a dual wielder character in Dungeons and Dragons, um, which uh, I, I think in the episode, uh, we do talk about how Eldritch Knight du dual wielder is not the most powerful option. Interesting. <laughs> Pretty badass. No, she's badass. We yeah. do talk about, yeah. yeah. It's just funny that we do mention we're like Eldritch Knight can work, but not as great as these. And I was like, oh, but yeah. it's yeah. it's. But we're, we're really positive. Dual wielding is a difficult archetype to pull off, and we 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 looked at uh, all the the options out there and the strategies for for pulling it off. So we're looking forward to that one coming out. Uh, nice. We also have an extra video coming out this week because uh, Kelly and I are going to be launching a new video series uh, where we want some of the help and feedback from the community uh, because we are going to be looking at ranking the subclasses for all 12 well we're going to do the artificer too all all so 13 core classes in dungeons and dragons fifth edition and so we're actually going to put out a google form to get your ratings as well so we can compare what everyone else thinks with what we think and put those together we'll be releasing all we'll go be going by class by class in each video uh talking about all the subclasses and comparing them and then giving them actual ratings uh on, on each one so we're curious to see what you think uh, and compare our thoughts against yours and, and put those out over the next couple of weeks it'll probably be a few months for us to get through all of them but we still want to get the input from the community on that so please uh check that video out when that drops as well later on this week and please give us your input on that one too Definitely. Don't forget uh, to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including Yes, 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 uh, Troll Killer, and some of the new ones from Shadows of Drakenheim. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Also, if you are enjoying the show, please support our work on Patreon if you are able to. And uh, join us on Patreon uh, by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And that also gets you access to our phenomenal Discord community where you can come and chat with all of us about all sorts of character creation, world building, um, or just talk to us about uh, whatever nerdy stuff you want. A lot of Star Trek chats in there. <laughs> lately i've noticed a lot of a lot of trekkies in the group it's been uh been interesting but honestly we talk about all sorts of things and there are areas in our discord where you can seek help from the community of dungeon dudes with your own character creation or designing your own campaigns so check it out and uh yeah be sure to join us live next tuesday when we record the campaign live on twitch uh check us out from 6 p.m to 9 p.m eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes and we upload all of the videos of our show onto our youtube as well uh thank you all so much for watching and we will see you next time in drakenheim